YouTube, this is Star Strike Duelist here for Multi Monster Deals to bring you guys a Shadal deck profile. Now, Shadal's got their release in Duelist Alliance, and they're definitely a very strong deck. I like it a lot. I brought it to my first real life tournament with it yesterday. It was like a quarter box tournament, uh, quarter case tournament, sorry, three boxes. And I thought the deck did really well. Obviously, there are like infinite amounts of variants you can run with the deck, so don't feel like you have to run this version. I just feel like it's been testing really well, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, sorry for the lack of videos lately. I went to North Carolina for a family vacation. I didn't have access to like record uh, videos over there and plus I was with family so you know I just took like the week off basically but I am here back and excited to start uh, making more videos. So let's go ahead and get straight into the deck profile. I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to hear any more of my boring updates. Um, another thing is I actually did upload a Duelist Alliance box opening uh, like two days ago but I had to delete it because I didn't realize that the last like four minutes of the video had cut off so you didn't get to see like any of the good pools and I feel like it was just bad quality to have on the channel since the video wasn't even complete so I had to delete it so hopefully we can get another uh, box opening up soon. But anyway guys uh, we're going to start off the deck profile with uh, three Shadal Beasts. Definitely one of the MVPs in the mirror and I want to explain that because a lot of people are going to be like oh since it's a level five doesn't it clog? Um, and the thing is um, one of the m most important things in the mirror match is not to leave your fusions out, obviously, because of Shadal, uh, fusion second effect that if you have a fusion out, then you, the, your opponent, uh, can use their Shadal fusion to special and use materials from their main deck, so they don't have to use things from their hand or field. Um, if, if, sorry if I word that confusing, like, just feel free to read Shadal fusion if you didn't understand my wording. Anyway, uh, the important thing is that you can go for your fusion plays, do whatever you need to, then you contribute off your fusion for a beast, so you have a set beast that you're able to abuse its effect with, plus you get your Shadal fusion back from grave because your fusion was sent to the grave. So um, it's just a really good play, and I definitely recommend uh, you maximizing uh, your amounts, of, maxing out on the count of beasts in your deck, because it's definitely like one of the MVPs. Um, then we run three Hedgehogs, he's basically the Stratos of the deck, he searches out uh, Shadal spells or traps, or when he's sent to the grave, he search uh, by a card effect, obviously. Uh, they All the Shadals get either a flip effect, and they also get an effect when they're sent to um, the graveyard by a card effect, meaning like anything that's not a cost, basically, kind of like the Dark Worlds. Um, but he's the Shadals of the deck. I definitely think it's important to have three, because opening turn, if you have like a lot of monsters in hand, you want to get your Shadal fusion to start going into your plays. Um, and he's just a really strong opening play to assure that you ha always have like a fusion hand or something. So uh, he's really good. Then we're moving on to, to Falco. Uh, Falco's interaction in the deck is very important because it helps you maintain field presence. It's also a tuner, which is like extremely amazing. And I just realized that I put on a dragon with the second Falco instead of the second Falco. There we go, two Falcos. Um, and it, you run so many levels in the deck. You run levels threes, fours, fives. Um, just like there's like ridiculously amounts of levels that you run, so so it adds so much versatility to the deck, and I love it a lot. Um, two dragon, he's kind of like the MST. He's also a compulse when he's flipped face up, and he has a lot of synergy with shadow games in my opinion because you can use shadow games as like an end phase MST, which is really powerful because we don't main deck uh, mystical space typhoons, and he's also a good beater of 1900. He's the strongest at all that you can uh, normal summon without a tribute, so that's uh, relevant as well. We run two Squamata, originally named Shadal Lizard. He's really important, uh, especially for dumping beasts, because I run Mathematician over Armageddon Knight, and you can't dump uh, beasts straight with math Mathematician because it has to be level 4 or lower. And it's also a really good opening play if you have something like a Mathematician or Foolish Burial. Uh, if you don't have anything you want to do, you can dump that guy to dump a Falco. Falco will special himself, and then that way you have a play for next turn uh, when it's flipped face up. So I think that's a really strong play as well. So. They're all really important in themselves. I like the ratio a lot uh, for this amount. You know, you can test your own ratios. As I said, there's a lot of different variants of the deck you run, uh, but I hopefully uh, this works out for you too. Moving on to the non shadows run three Mathematician. I really like his uh, synergy with Felice. I also like his ability to generate you a plus one if he's uh, destroyed by battle, so that's pretty cool too. Um, Felice is not really dead in this deck. People say, oh, what if you draw it? You can't normal summon, much like the Light Sworn Wolf. However, use it to go into Construct uh, with your Shadal Fusion. So it, it, the thing is, like, you need lights in the deck. Like, that's how you make Construct. So there's no reason why, like, I don't like Felice. Like, I think it's just a good card. Plus, it's a tuner on top of that. Not only does it special itself, but it's a tuner. So this plus this is an instant Black Rose or Arcanine Magician, which is just really important to abuse Arcanine in this deck. Like, it's instant removal. Um, and it's just a really strong one-card play, so I like it a lot. 
Moving on, uh, we run a baby dragon, a little engine here. We run two white dragons, one black dragon, and one eclipse wyvern. Now, at first glance, um, I thought this variant was pretty bad. Like, I'm like, oh, it looks awkward, you know, you're running too many different cards. But the reason why this card has so, uh, these cards have so much synergy within the deck, because obviously these are able to be summoned super easily because you have like an infinite amount of darks in the deck. Uh, but then when he's sent, you can search out him and he banishes Eclipse Wyvern in order to get your Dark Armed. Now, Dark Armed plays are really powerful in this deck. Um, I think, like, you won't believe how many times I abused, uh, abused Dark Arm within testing. Like, it's amazing. And the fact that you can trigger Wyvern off of using it as a Shadal Fusion material or, like, uh, just setting it. Like, they think it's a, they think it's a Shadal, so they'll, like, try to, like, get rid of it uh, without flipping it face up or something. And it just happens to be a Wyvern, so you get to, um banish that off of that like there's just so many plays you can do with these cards and the fact that they're all lights and darks for fusion is really good too i also add a lot of versatility to the deck and i think versatility is very important so you can uh, make more plays especially in the mirror match you want to be able to outplay your opponent and they help you make cool things like rank fours as well they also trigger uh if they use a synchro material so that's cool too uh keep in mind you have to be sent from field to graveyard not just in the graveyard in general uh, and obviously the dad dad's amazing uh one vls no need to explain that. And one Caius. Caius is very powerful in the mirror match. It's just really good removal in general. And as like I said, I want instant outs uh, to the mirror match because it's definitely going to be one of the most uh, popular decks played. So Caius has been working out really well. I originally had two in the deck, but I had to cut it because of space issues and also I don't want uh, cloggy hands. Moving on to the spells. We run three Shadal Fusion. No need to explain this. It's like a miracle fusion and the fact that it triggers your Shadals as well is extremely powerful. Uh, run one Foolish Burial, one Allure of Darkness because your deck is full of darks and it's draw power. Uh, one Mind Control. Mind Control is something that I was thinking about. It was originally in the side deck, um, but I figured like it's just a really good card because not only because of the mirror match, but because you run tuners. So like if you can take your opponent's monsters um, and like synchro with them, XYZ with them, it's just really good. Like Mind Control is just a broken card in general. Run two Soul Charge. Uh, Soul Charge is a card that not a lot of people run, but not only is it like the best card in the game, I think in a deck that you run so many types of different levels and tuners and variety, I think it's just a really good card. Plus, if you use it at the right time, it just puts you back in the game. Um, I have to admit there are times where I draw like double in my opening hand and it upsets me, but you know, that's like drawing double controller and mermaids. You can't, uh... You should not just not run it because you're afraid of drawing two, you know? Uh, if you don't want to run it, definitely don't run it at, uh, don't run it at zero. Like, if you're really going to cut it down to one, I guess you can, but definitely keep the one in because it can make some awesome power plays. Uh, and then the one Book of Moon as a staple. Moving into the traps, we run three Shadow Games. Uh, the expensive card in the deck, we opened up a case and we only pulled, like, a couple of these. Like, it was ridiculous. But anyway, um, Shadow Games is... I can't even, like, I could write, like, paragraphs about this card. Like, it can be used, as I mentioned earlier, as an M base MST. Uh, it can be used to make, like, any play you want. Like, if you need a Falco play, say you need to search out uh, something with Hedgehog, you can dump Hedgehog. If you want to just draw one, you can dump a Beast. Like, it just does everything for you. Uh, and then it flips up your Shadows as well, which is just a plus. Like, the, like there's just so many plays you can do with it. Like, the, the possibilities are endless. Uh, two vanities emptiness. Uh, this concept is kind of like similar to the dragon ruler concept. Uh, if you guys play dragon rulers, you can basically make like really good boards that your opponent can't get past, and then you just flip vanities and you win because there's nothing they can do. Uh, a lot of people are also cutting MSC from their main deck. Uh, at least I know Shadal players are, so they don't really play MSC. So this can be really, uh, especially in a simplified game state. Like if you flip this one, they only have a couple cards and it's basically a game over. Uh, two breakthrough skill, really important against everything. It's really good against spell books, against like blue boy and stuff. Um, it's really good against the mirror match because you can shut down any of their monsters when you want to. And you can use it twice. You get two uses out of it. Like in case you want to sh uh, shut down their like window or something uh, on your turn. And then the one compulse. This is really important too because uh, the shut off fusions won't trigger because they can only trigger when sent to grave and this returns to the extra deck. A lot of people cut this card uh, previous... Uh, I guess I can't remember if previous formats, I mean, just because a new box came out doesn't mean it's a new format. But before the uh, Duelist Alliance, a lot of people were cutting it. But now I definitely think it's an important card. Uh, that's all for the main deck. Let's get into the extra deck. Uh, run the three tokens. Always, every single deck profile has these three tokens. Um, run two Construct. Uh, one thing that I have to mention before finishing uh, the rest of the extra deck is that 
This is not the ideal Escher deck. There's about three or four cards that I would like to change, but I did not have access to them. I basically have the whole deck built except for one Winda. I only have one copy of Winda, um, but that's my fault. But I didn't want to proxy it, so I went ahead and built a full Extra deck like with one Winda uh, because obviously I brought it to a tournament. So this is not the ideal Extra deck. I will justify and explain my choices in this one, but I also tell everyone at the end what I would take out for the ideal Extra deck. So the cool to construct uh, the Winda, there's supposed to be two, obviously, I said, but this is still a 15-card Extra deck, so we have one right here. Uh, it, it, they're just your boss monsters. Like everyone knows about them. He's basically like a ca uh, cataster in a way, and he just shuts uh, shuts you down. If you, have, especially if you have protection, but you have to be careful because like if they already have an established board, Winda isn't really gonna do anything for you. Uh, moving on to the synchros, we have Black Rose, we have Arcanine. Arcanine is these two are just like super like um, easy to be abused in this deck just because. Uh, especially because of the Mathematician and Freeze play, but Arcanine is just a great card. It's like instant removal. Um, same with Black Rose. It's Black Rose. Uh, moving on to the sixes. I don't know why we did the sevens first, but we do run Goyo, uh, just a generic uh, good level six. Tempest Magician, you can use this to burn uh, your opponent very easily. I won like two games off of Tempest, I believe. Um, run Spark because you run Vanity, so you can play the Spark Vanity's uh, protection game. And the one Leo because you do make it sometimes. I guess I can move this over now. Next, we run into the XYZs. Um, this is probably where the most changes would take place, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. Uh, we have, where is it? Sorry, there we go. Uh, one 101, one Exciton Knight, uh, one Castell. Castell was uh, released in the newest set as well. I like Castell a lot because it's really good in the mirror match because it shuffles the monsters in the deck instead of saying for grape. So Castell is really good, and he has a pretty decent attack at 2,000. Uh, one Diamond Dire Wolf. My logic behind this was that it was instant removal for any problem cards such as Soul Drain, Defissure, uh, and uh, just Floodgates, like Shadow Mirror and stuff. So I like that. Um, one Dweller. Um, generic good. XYZ. Uh, and Pallades because you run a level of uh, pretty decent amount of level 5. You run the Beast, you run the Winda. So it's just not that uh, impossible to go through. I think Pallades is just uh, one of the best uh, generic rank 5s. Uh, you could also run like Volcasaurus and stuff, but it's actually been one of the cards that I cut out the deck. Uh, so I'm going to tell you guys, uh, if I had the ideal extra deck, I would cut probably a Diamond Direwolf uh, for the second window, a Beast Dweller for a Levier, because a Levier came up so much. Like I found that there were a lot of times where I flipped the Hedgehog uh, to search the spell, usually I usually search Fusion, um, and then I went to a Mathematician play, and I would have two level threes, and I would have good cards banished because of the baby dragons, and I feel like Levier is just, like, really important. Like, I like that card a lot. Um, and then I would probably cut, uh, I would for sure cut Pallades for a Armades. Like, Armades has to be in this deck. Like, it's so important. Like, Armades is just, like, the best. Um, and then the last thing is that you can cut 101 or Castell, uh, for a Lavalvo Chain, because Lavalvo Chain has obviously a lot of inherent synergy within the deck. However, like, I really like these cards. Um, Lavalvo Chain did come up, but the thing is about Lavalvo Chain is I don't think... It was never a time where I'm like, oh my gosh, if I had Lavalvo Chain, I would have won the game. Because uh, these cards are just really good too. So, uh, that's optional, but for these three, I would for sure change it for the second window, Levier, and Armades. Um, so, those are the things I would change about the deck. But the rest of it was fine. Like, the synchros and stuff are definitely things I would run. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, the deck profile. That's all I have to say. Sorry the video was kind of long. I just had a lot to say because I feel like there's so many um, so many things you can do in this deck. And people definitely, I think, uh, they kind of have this like mindset that it's like Evil Swarm where you just summon Wind or Construct and you win. No, it's not like that at all. Especially against a mirror match, you really have to outplay your opponent. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the deck profile. As I said, feel free to leave your comments down below. And I will see you later, YouTube. Hey guys, if you would like to stay in touch with me, please check out my social networking websites as well as multi-monster deals for awesome coverage and articles. But anyway guys, I will see you later. Bye!